everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about costuming on a budget. For a lot of people, the idea of getting into historical costuming can be incredibly daunting. Not only does Instagram make it look like all historical costumers are incredibly skilled, but it also looks seriously expensive. If you were to base everything off of watching a Fancy Styles fabric live with $30 to $40 a yard silk, or stare at all the beautiful $250 pairs of American Duchess shoes, you might think that there's no way you could ever attempt costuming. It's just a leisure activity for the rich, right? Wrong. I first got into historical costuming fresh out of college when I lived in Florida and worked at Disney World. In other words, I had no money at all. But I was still able to make it happen. And I did this by shopping smart. So let's break this down into the various elements of costuming and take a look at some of the best resources out there in each category in order to save the most money. Now, I do want to give a little caveat first. Now that I'm in my 30s, I do tend to pay less attention to budget than I did 10 years ago. I'm in a job where I make $20 an hour instead of $7.25, so it's a little easier. I've also used all the tips I'm including here to build a stash of inexpensive fabrics over time, and now I'm able to shop my stash for a lot of projects as well, which really helps to balance my budget when I do have a more expensive project. In any case, let's start with how to plan your costumes. In my opinion, the best way to costume on a budget is to plan in advance. Look at what costume you want to make and what all is required in order to make this costume. Don't forget your linings, notions, trims, etc. in addition to your actual fabric. Write it all down someplace handy, like a note in your phone, with how much you need of each element of the costume. And also, write down your actual budget so you know your max spending. This way, you're able to shop sales and acquire everything when it's a good price, as opposed to needing everything in a pinch. You'll know exactly how much you'll need of each item, and you'll know what prices you need to stick to in order to not exceed your budget. This might also spread out the purchases for this project, possibly allowing yourself more time to save, which might even increase your budget. Generally, I do this sort of thing about once a year, planning out everything I'm going to make in the next year so that I hopefully have ample time to acquire everything. That way, you're able to shop, say, like five projects at a time when things are on sale. So let's talk fabrics. There are so many resources out there for inexpensive fabrics. One good place to start is a thrift store or charity shop. Occasionally, you can find actual yardage here, but you can also find curtains, sheets, and tablecloths. And depending on what you're able to find here, these might work for actual costumes, or they might work better for mock-ups or linings. And you're helping to recycle cast-off items too, which is really great. Another second-hand option is a D-Stash group on Facebook, such as Construction Items for Historical Costuming, which I've linked down below, but there are a lot of others as well. The next place to go is your local fabric store. First off, if you're shopping at a place like Joann's, do not forget your coupons. Shop their sales. They literally put out so many coupons and sales that their prices are actually jacked up about 40% because they expect you to be using coupons. So sign up for their incredibly annoying email list, download the app, or, you know, that sort of thing. And quick tip, even if you manage to shop there on the one day that they don't have a sale going on, there is always a 40% off coupon on joanne.com in the coupon section. If you're in a bind and need a couple items on these rare days, just do multiple transactions using the same coupon. Yes, the people there might hate you, but it's worth it. My other Joann's tip is to shop the clearance table. I would say it's usually pretty rare to find silk or wool here, but I have found silk taffeta a couple times, and when I was in there last week, I found 100% linen on the table as well. Now, that said, do not get carried away with shopping for your stash. The easiest way to overspend is to overshop. I didn't actually buy that linen I saw because I knew I didn't need it. And in fact, for most of my costuming life, I have given myself a strict rule to not buy fabric unless there's a specific project that I know I will use it for. I only make exceptions for this rule if the price is literally too good to pass up, like 100% wool or silk taffeta for under $10 a yard. For example, the four bolts of 100% wool fabric I have managed to snag from fabric.com, which came out to about $5 a yard, or that Joanne silk taffeta, which wound up about $6 a yard after coupons. When you find deals like these, get it if you know you will use it down the line. 
However, if it's a color or pattern or fabric content that you hate, still don't get it because you'll never want to use it. Speaking of fabric content, don't forget that for a ton of eras, cotton is really your friend. I have made many dresses from cottons in the quilting cotton section of Joann's, stuff you can get for about four to five dollars a yard with a coupon. Just looking at the last year's projects, my peppermint bustle and blue to sew bustle both fall into these categories. These fabrics were all about four dollars a yard, which is good when you need 10 or so yards. You also don't have to use natural fibers like silk if that just doesn't fit in your budget. Try to avoid shiny polyester, but if a poly matte satin fits in your budget and silk duchess satin does not, by all means, go with the poly. Of course, if you're not looking for cotton or poly fabrics, Joann's is not exactly a great resource. So these are some of my favorite online resources, and I will link all of these down below. Fabric Mart fabrics can be good for silk and wool. I find that this site is better for adding those super great deals to your stash as opposed to shopping for a specific project on a deadline. They send out a daily email with their sales, and there's also one flash sale item every day in that email. I have found silk taffeta as low as I think about $5 a yard from these flash sales, though admittedly with the price of silk going up, they haven't had flash sales on silk in quite some time. I think the last silk flash sale I got was the Elsa Silk Satin File for about $10 a yard a couple years ago. However, they do fairly regularly have flash sales on wool, particularly if you're looking for navy or black wool, and the regular wool sales can result in pretty good prices too. I also find that you can really trust their stated fabric contents more so than some other sites. Fabric.com and Fashion Fabrics Club can also be great resources for wool, though I have had problems with fabric content from those sites before, so your mileage may vary. There's a couple specific sites I use for specific fabrics too, which have by far the best prices. I go through a lot of cotton organdy and silk organza. For cotton organdy, I go to Vogue Fabrics, who has by far the best prices. And for silk organza, Dharma Trading is your friend. Though the narrower width there is a much higher quality than the wide width I've found, so just FYI. Admittedly, silk taffeta has become pretty challenging to find at a cheap, like under $15 a yard price. My most reliable resource is honestly the LA Fabric District, specifically luxury fabrics and home fabrics, but obviously getting there is probably not feasible for the majority of people, especially right now. In past years, I've gone there once a year during costume college and stocked up on everything I knew I would need for the year, but obviously that's not been possible for a while, and I will probably have to spring for $20 a yard silk from Silk Baron for my Felicity Christmas dress later this year. And that means that the rest of my projects need to become less expensive. So let's talk notions and trims really quickly. Notions like hooks and eyes are best bought in bulk. Richard the Thread is a great resource for this. The rest of my notions like thread, bias tape, etc., I just buy from Joann's with coupons. Trims are super important, especially if you're doing something Victorian or Edwardian. Recently, I found that many trims can actually be had on Amazon if you know what terms to search for, and often these wind up about $1.50 a yard or less, though you do have to be okay with buying like a 10 yard spool. Honestly, most of my other trims come from Joann's using coupons or from the bargain basement at Costume College, which is another fabulous resource for those that attend where you can find patterns, trims, fabrics, and so much more. Speaking of patterns, they can really add up price-wise. That's why I got so into Franken patterning from the big three patterns, which I can purchase for a dollar or two, and also into sizing up gridded patterns from books. And yes, I will have a video out on that soon. Both of these are super budget-friendly methods. That said, they're not as friendly on time or patience, so if you value those more than your money, just do yourself a favor and buy the more expensive, truly Victorian or equivalent patterns. Or a really good medium is black snail patterns too, since they're low cost, downloadable patterns that still do most of the work for you, other than taping together your pattern pieces, of course. By the way, if you're just getting into costuming and you're having to factor a sewing machine into your budget, I know that can be a real challenge. You can sometimes find sewing machines at secondhand stores, but test them out first, or on places like Facebook Marketplace. You can also get new machines pretty inexpensively, like for about $100 from big box stores and Amazon and such, but please do keep in mind that these are not particularly good machines and they generally have plastic parts that will break down easily. If you can spring for it, you're much better off getting a $300 to $400 sturdy machine, which will last you a very long time instead. 
I have experience with machines in this price point from Brother and from Viking, and the quality difference between these and those cheaper machines is really night and day. Oh, and in general, stay away from newer Singer machines as they're pretty poor quality. Okay, so now you have all of your fabrics and patterns and such, and you've made your outfit, and it's time to start to accessorize it. But where to start? Let's talk shoes first. Obviously, American Duchess shoes, while gorgeous, don't fit in a lot of budgets. But generally, I'd say that there are three types of shoes that, between the three, can pretty much work for you for any era. Ballet flats, plain mid-heel height pumps, and lace-up boots. No, they might not be perfect, but they'll do. And in fact, one of my favorite, most perfect pair of historical shoes is a pair of square-toed flats that I found at Payless of all places, and they work fantastically for the 1820s through 50s. Okay, now for stockings. I've mentioned them before, but I love sock dreams. They have lots of different knee-high or taller socks that work great for historical sizes, fit plus size legs, and are about $10 a pair with no tax and free shipping. Moving up to gloves, almost all of my vintage gloves have come from the thrift store, estate sales, or occasionally antique stores. There's lots of gloves to be had, even for large hands like mine, and these can usually be found for about $5 to $8 a pair. Thrift and antique stores can also be great for hats. The majority of the hats that I have that weren't made from scratch with buckram are made of straw or wool bases from the thrift store, which I stripped of any previous bands or decorations and reshaped and decorated to fit my needs. Other accessories, such as jewelry or tiaras, can easily and cheaply be acquired from places like eBay or AliExpress. They won't be the best quality, and they'll take a month to get to you, but they'll definitely help you stick to your budget. I know that this probably doesn't cover every single item you need, but hopefully this is a good base to see how you can costume on a budget. Just as a few examples of my costumes made on a budget, the peppermint bustle I just made cost me about $55 to make. My Edwardian jumper dress and shirtwaist from last year was a real steal, with everything except a couple of the trims coming from fabrics that were left over from other projects. I think I spent like about $15 on it, if that. And even my giant blue Tissot inspired bustle dress from last year that has over 20 yards of fabric in it, including the linings, still only cost me about $150, which for a dress of that size is still a bargain. Anyway, I hope this was helpful in giving you some ideas of how to save money and create your costumes on a budget. If you have any other budget costuming tips, please comment them down below. And if you liked this video, please be sure to click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with sewing vlogs on Tuesdays and other costuming content like this out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to support me in all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi account down below. And I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patron, Heidi. Once again, thank you so, so much for watching. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!